Now there are times when you want to get feedback from your students but you don't necessarily want to do it in a really formal way. Um, a lot of times if you just want to see who has experience with the program, you just want to ask a question, have the students answer it. It's not a quiz, it's not an assignment, it's not even a survey because it's just a, a one particular topic that you're asking about. You just want to get quick feedback. Moodle has a good way of doing that and it's called the choice tool. So what we want to do is show you how to add uh, choices to your class. It's a really simple way to just see uh, what students are doing, make sure that they're participating when they log in, and getting quick feedback. So to get started we have to turn editing on. <coughs> and this is going to be an activity. So we go to the week where we want to add the choice. We go to the add an activity drop down box and what we do is we locate the choice example. Uh, the choice, choice link and we click on it. <clears throat> what this is going to do is ask you for a name for the choice. This is the link that's going to appear. So this is the link and this is the actual choice text. The choice text is the question that you're asking them. So again I can say how many of you have used Moodle. And under the options, what happens is you can limit the number of responses allowed. Generally, you're um, not going to want to limit the number of responses allowed, but there are going to be occasions when you may want to do that. Uh, if you want to make sure that you see people, um, who, if you want people to sign up for a group, you can limit how many people could, could uh, join each particular group that's the sort of thing that you'd want to do with the, the limiting. So choice one could be yes, lots of experience. Choice number two, again, these are, you have as many choices as you want, and the choices are the options that students are going to have for, for giving you feedback. And again, if you wanted to limit the number of responses allowed, you could do that by turning this on, enabling it under the limit field, and then you could enter uh, for each choice how many people uh, are allowed to select that. Again, if you think about um, assigning groups or having people select groups, you could uh, have the question be which group do you want to be a part of. You could limit each group to five people and the first five people to uh, pick a group that's the group they're in. That's the sort of situation when you'd want to use the limiting. And when you're done, what you can do is uh, scroll down. You could restrict answering uh, to a specific time period. Again, if it's time sensitive, you could have them answer. If you don't want to know um, after a certain date, you could close it down. The display mode, you could have the questions displayed horizontally or vertically. Under Publish Results, you could show this results to the students after they answered. You could have the um, results view, uh, displayed to the students after the choice is closed. And you could always show results to students. If you think about if you've ever gone to a website where they ask you uh, your opinion, a lot of the news sites may have something like that. You could vote and then it shows you the response. If that's what you want to do, you just click Show Results to Students After They Answer. You have the ability to publish the uh, results anonymously so that they do not show the students' names. You could allow them to update the choice and you can uh, show a column for the unanswered students. And uh, what I'm going to want to do is publish the anonymous results so students do not know who answered what and save and return to course. Now what I want to do is show you what things look like from a student's perspective. So I'm going to open up a, a browser window where I'm logged in as a student. And you can see right now uh, the choice questions are anything with a question mark. So in this case I have a choice how many of you have experience using an image editing program. This is a, a question that I've created ahead of time. You click on it and as a student what you do is you see the question have you previously used an image editing program? We're going to be using GIMP. This is the question. And then what you can do is see the answers. Yes, some experience, very little. Uh, so what you could do is make your choice. When you click Save the Choice, 
In this case, uh, I have the the uh, results set to show the students how the show the students how the class is answered. And in this case, because we only have one answer, uh, one person who's answered, the results are pretty boring. But this is the way the choice tool works from a student's perspective. Now, from the faculty member's perspective, what you can do is go down and click on a choice. So I'm going to go to a little different one. I'm going to click on it. And what it can do is display the responses for you uh, when you log in. So as an instructor, I can know that Bill has lots of experience converting PDF files. Um, this student has done it once or twice. So when you create a choice question, you sort of get this instant feedback. Um, the students do it. They feel like they're engaged. They're letting you know, you know how they feel about a particular topic. And as the instructor, you can log in and see you know, who's been answering what. So I recommend that you use this just to sort of gauge your students, um, see how they feel about a particular topic, see what their background with the topic may be, and uh, just get your instant feedback. Again, there's no grade associated with this. This isn't something where they lose points if they answer wrong. This is just meant for you to get a feel of uh, what the class is thinking and how they're feeling.